Hey, okay, so this is just going to be a really quick recording of where I've gone to with the custom system builder um, for supporting more stories. I think it's come along quite nicely. Um, still think uh, there are better versions out there, but it is what it is, and I think it'll do the job. So I've just got my Foundry instance uh, installed, uh, and I'm going to just walk you quickly through it. So just a small side note. So Custom System Builder is the system that I'm using. Um, when you install it on your Foundry instance, you'll get a couple of additional little buttons. Most importantly, this export and import template JSON. Now I have already created this JSON and um, I'll try and store it somewhere so I can link to it. Um, so people can just grab it if they want to use it. Anyway, all right. So first of all, you go here and you select said JSON file. That then creates the template uh, which is stored in here. So this is the template I'm referring to. Um, as you can see, we have uh, configured all of the skills. We've got a to hit roll, a damage roll, a roll crit, a roll for cover. Um, under skills, we've got all the skull, all the skills identified. We also have um, the wounds and the wound impact. Now, um, this is the template, so I won't play with it too much. I'm sitting behind all of these are little formulas that do funky things. Uh, and then under the tabs, we've also got a combat tab, which has a dynamic table that talks to the weapons and the armor that you might be wielding or wearing. Um, there's a talents and specializations tab, which just allows you to put the detail of your talent or your specialization in. Um, if you're influencing a role, you just have to add the bonus die. I'll show you how that works when I get to the character sheet. There's um, two dynamic tables. One I've created for basically any form of equipment. One I've created for ammo so that you can count how much ammo you're using. Um, importantly, I'm not auto calculating how, whether you're over or under your encumbrance. Um, that is for the player to sort out. And then there's the notes, which is just where people can put as much or as little detail as they want about their person. Um, and then up here, we obviously have all of the standard stuff. So that's all pretty well worked out. So when you create the JSON, uh, you will need to go into creating a new character. So I'll just create a new one. Um, I won't create them in the, uh, no, I won't create them in the folder. I'll call them Fred. Uh, they're a character, not a template. A template being the thing we've imported. Um, so you get this type of presentation up, uh, because I've only got one template on my system. It's giving me one choice. I hit that, that now creates the character sheet. So I now have a character sheet to make with Fred. Um, most of these fields are just data import fields, da da da, and so forth and so on. Um, flaws, virtues, service branch, age, language, all the same. Uh, these are just counters. So how many lucky strikes do I currently have? How many food bars am I currently carrying? What's my current endurance? What's my max endurance? Um, whether I'm rallied or whether I've been treated, what wounds or trauma I'm currently carrying are all just text fields. Then in addition to that, what we've done here is I've created a to hit roll, which is basically just a, you know, put in all the things. So current skill, just your combination of strength and, uh, sorry, uh, your combination of stat and skill, um, plus whether you've undertaken, suffered any uh, wounds or weariness or any of those sorts of things. So let's say I had four agility and I had two range combat and I was tired, I would put five dice in. Yes, five dice. So I put five dice there. Then if I was shooting suppressive fire, I might put three dice in for that. And then if the weapon had a bonus of one die, I would do it that way. That will then roll all of those dice. Um, and over here in the chat window, I will get a, your dice pool was nine dice and I scored one success. And if I want to know what ones I received, I actually have to go into the pool and look for uh, the ones. Unfortunately, there's no way to count both successes and failures under the current system. It's just not saying it can support. So you just have to look. So I've got one, one and uh, one six. And if I wanted to roll again, so I wanted to push, I would only roll for seven dice. So I could do that again. And this time I could literally just, because it doesn't actually make any difference, I could just put seven dice in there. And this will be my push result. 
which looks like I got one additional success and no additional ones. So I'm now carrying one foobar and I've got two successes that I can then use. Um, I can roll damage rolls. So what's your damage modifier? So this is both additional successes you choose to spend as well as the bonus of the weapon. So if it's a plus two bonus for the weapon and I put an additional success from my successes in as I just got them, then I get plus three. It auto calculates and niftily it tells me that I got an 11 on the die and I got um, between 10 and 12 and that's what 10 and 12 means, which means I can now roll on my critical. So I roll my critical and the critical tells me that I got a torso crit, um, which was a flesh wound, count your lucky stars. Uh, importantly, uh, those are all working off rollable tables, which you have to create. So just by way of example, I've created these rollable tables. They've all got their names. They're used in the formulas. So you would need to use the rollable tables. Um, but it was more elegant than putting all of that detail into the character sheet. And obviously it also has the advantage that I can actually just roll it directly if I so choose. So if I go to the location table here, I can roll it. And up it comes and it tells me the same thing. So it allows me to roll crits discreetly so I can go into a particular rollable table. Say someone's doing a called shot on the head. I can just roll the head table. Uh, and that allows me to then pull that out. So it's quite nice, I think. Um, now, uh, the skills and stats, you just increment your stats per this. And let's say I had... Uh, I don't know, I was making up a character and I had two points of stamina. Uh, what'll happen is when I hit this, it'll go, is there anything else that you want to consider? Um, I go, nope, I've got no bonuses. And it rolls that many dice. Wow, that was an excellent roll, three sixes. Um, importantly, uh, once again, the checkboxes don't get counted, unfortunately. They're just there for the sake of bookkeeping. Um, but... If you have suffered, say, two checkboxes worth of wounds, then you take the minus. So that'll be minus two. Now, when I roll stamina again, so noting that I was rolling five dice before, I will now only roll three. Ta-da! So it counts the failures. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the to hit roll to be quite so elegant, so I haven't tried. Um, so you do that across all the skills. Um, you've obviously got the four different boxes for condition or four different sets of conditions. So that's all covered there. Um, there's a cover roll just so if the player is asked to make a cover roll, they can just input whatever cover they're rolling. So it might be four dice in my case. And once again, it'll come back with you rolled four dice and you got no successes. Hashtag sad face. Um, for weapons, you just enter the weapon stats in here. It does nothing. It is once again just a way of keeping count. So if I'm using an M1 carbine, uh, I might put in the bonus at one and so forth and so on. And I can read it out from the character sheet and do that. Uh, importantly, I did put in a roll for armor just because it's quite discreet. So if I was wearing a helmet, which gave me an armor value of, I don't know what it gives you, but let's say two, um, and I might just go head um, if I was shot in the head, I could roll my armor. It will ask me if I want to put a cover modifier in as well. So if I had some cover as well, and then it will roll four dice because it'll combine the armor value and the cover value to get you that. And lo and behold, I got two successes. So I am a winner. And um, just at the bottom of the character sheet, just to help players navigate combat, um, I've dumped in the tables and that is the only IP that I've directly used from the books and, and it's the only IT I intend to use. Uh, talents and descriptions, um, same story. You put the talent name here, you put your description here so you can read it. Specializations, also same story. Now, someone else has done this using items. Um, I chose not to just because it's easier to read them when they're like this. Um, equipment, <coughs> same story. I can just input my equipment. What's the item? What's the description? How much does it weigh? What's the ammo? Sorry, my apologies. What's the ammo? Type and weight. Oops. Oh, okay. That's on me. I think I have failed you all. I will fix that table before I go any further. Um, these two are meant to be numbers and they're meant to count and I will fix that. Sorry about that. That's on me. 
And then, like I said, there's an oats field. Um, beyond that, it's pretty raw and standard, but I think it does the job. And obviously, you can also put a picture in if you have a picture to put in for your character. Um, and that's it. That's all. I think it's pretty elegant. It works. It'll do the job. Um, there's a bit more player engagement, maybe, than some of the other BTT systems. And I just want to once again comment that the custom system builder is an excellent implementation and really worth your time. So if anyone's interested, um, I will try and find a way to store the JSON files that I'm talking about. So that'll be a JSON for the template. It'll be a JSON for the rollable tables. Um, and I'll also put some um, scrimmage notes in there that will just help you upload the rollable tables in the right way so that you don't blow up the functions um, and also just a couple of very small notes on how you have to refresh the sheet actually I can show you that now actually why don't I just show you that now so if I go here uh, I'll delete the sheet delete yes get angry I'll go here I'll re-import it import set json file select file Boom, there it is, it's reappeared. See how it's blank, really annoying. Go into the sheet and just change this to default. Then hit save sheet configuration and it fixes it. That's all you need to do. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. Um, and that will allow your sheet to work and that's pretty much the heart and soul of it. Um, by the same logic, uh, if you have not when you come to install, I can just delete, uh, I'll delete the crit location table. Um, so let me delete that. Yes. So when you're uploading the um, table, the JSON tables, just create a rollable table, call it whatever you want to call it. I just call them table one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, just do that. And then you can close this. You can right click on the table. You can say input data. Um, I'll choose my file and it was the crit location table, not leg, not head, crit location. Uh, open that up. Uh, and then go import. And there it is. Now, um, for reasons that are not 100% clear to me, uh, yep, and it's already there, so that's all good. I'll just make sure that works. It does this. So I don't know why that doesn't work, but if I go into the table, the crit location table in particular, and I update it, and then I roll it. Once I've done that once, he says bravely, about to make an idiot of himself. No, not really. It works. So just do those two things and your two thumbs up. Uh, that's it. Uh, have fun. Uh, like I said, I'll put links to the necessary files. Okay, bye.